Hi again, um, my name is Adriana Arias and we are continuing talking about voting theory and we're going to look at a different type of voting method. Okay, this type of voting method is called an instant runoff voting and the goal of this is to achieve a majority winner, right? We want somebody that has 50%, more than 50% of the votes. And the way that we are going to do this is we are basically going to eliminate candidates with the least first choice votes until we get a majority vote. So these are the steps that we're going to take. If we are given a preference schedule, we're going to check right away, do we have a majority winner? If a majority winner exists, they win, we're done. But if there isn't a majority winner, what we're going to do is we're going to eliminate the candidate with the first choice votes, and we're going to repeat the process until we have a majority winner. So let's look at this example. We have five candidates, A, B, C, D, and E. Now, the number of votes that we have out there, if you count these up, I have 13, 8, 4, 3, and 2. We have a total of 30 voters. Now, if we want to, if we want there to be a majority winner, they need to have more than 50% of the votes, right? So to determine how many votes are needed for a majority win, I'm going to take the 30 voters, half of it. So half is 15. And if I want there to be a majority winner, I'm going to add one more. And I need 16 voters in a first choice, a candidate to have 16 votes as their first choice in order for there to be a majority winner. So if you notice here, there is no majority winner. No candidate has 16 or more votes. The closest one is A. A has the most at 13. So what we're going to do is we're going to eliminate the candidate that has the fewest first choice votes. And if you look at this, um, 13 voters chose A as number one, a total of 12 voters chose B as their first choice, two of them chose C as their first choice, three of them chose D, but nobody chose E. Candidate E doesn't have any first choice votes, so what we're going to do is we're eliminating candidate E and we're going to repeat this process. So this is like our first round where we checked and we said there is no majority winner. So now in our second round, we are going to eliminate candidate E. So we said E had the least number of first choice votes. So we are going to eliminate candidate E and we're going to move everybody that was behind him or her, could be a girl, anybody that was after candidate E, they're going to be moved up. So if you notice in the table below, we moved those votes up to basically count for candidate E being gone. And again, this idea has to do with what we talked about in the previous video, this whole um, transitivity, right? That assuming that a voter in the middle is gone, you still prefer, the, the votes are still transitive, right? You still have a preference of your A, B, C, D, or like first choice. So now what we're going to do is we have a new table and we're gonna see, do we have a majority number of votes here? Now, if you notice, my first choice table actually didn't change. The only change that happened was in the third choice and the fourth choice one. Nothing changed, A still has, 13 first choice votes, B has 12, C has two, and D has three. So there is no majority winner. So we're gonna do this one more time. And we're gonna look at who has the least number of first choice votes. And if we look at this, the person who has the least number of first choice votes is candidate C. Candidate C only has two first choice votes, so we're next we're going to eliminate candidate C. And that's what we're going to do in the third round. We will eliminate candidate C because they had the least number of first choice votes, so C is gone. And what happens next is anybody who was after candidate C is now being moved up in ranking. And that's what the new table below shows. So now let's go ahead and figure out, does anybody have the majority votes? Now remember, in order to get a majority, we said that we need 16 first place votes. So again, when I look at this, A has 13 votes. Candidate B actually absorbed some new votes. Okay, so my B candidate has 
eight and four, that's 12, two more, has 14 votes. And candidate D has three first place votes. So again, no majority winner. Nobody has gotten up to 16 votes. So we're going to do this one more time. And the candidate that we're going to eliminate is the one that has the least first choice votes. And that's going to be candidate D. Candidate D only has three first choice votes with this method. So in our fourth round, we are now eliminating candidate D. So D is going away. Any candidate that came after him or her is moving up in ranking. And again, that is what the new table below shows. So now the only candidates left are candidates A and candidates B. So I'm going to count their first choice votes. Candidate A has 13 votes. Candidate B has all these other votes. So they have 12 plus 5. They have 17 votes. And remember, in order to get a majority win, they only need. So with this instant runoff method, B would be the winner. So we had to do this four times of eliminating first choices and having them move up and repeating until we got a majority vote winner. But again, this method of elimination, this instant runoff voting method, the idea is to get the winner to have majority of the votes. Now, B we said is this instant runoff voting winner. But if we remember and we go back to the original table, okay, so let me scroll back up. When we were given this first table, based off of plurality, candidate A would have won. If we were doing a plurality voting system, A would have won because A had the most votes. But with this instant runoff, after we did this a few times, we ended up finally getting that A went head to head with B. And then with this instant runoff voting method, B ended up getting the majority of the votes. 